Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We've come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Chapter 6 Some time after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is, the Sea of Tiberias, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing those who were ill. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. 
but how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About five thousand men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. Today we continue our series on the seven signs of John. John's Gospel records seven of Jesus' miracles, and at the end of this Gospel he tells us that his purpose in recording these miracles is so that we can believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and by believing we may have life in his name. The feeding of the 5,000 is the fourth sign that John gives us. It's probably Jesus' most famous miracle, apart from the cross and resurrection itself. It's the only miracle, except for that cross and resurrection, that is recorded in Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. So it's clearly important. Each of those writers gives the event a slightly different emphasis. One of the things that John is concerned about is to show us the authority of Jesus, that Jesus is in control. The previous chapter of John's book centres around the authority that God the Father has given to his Son. Uh, so in John chapter 5 and verses 20 and 21, we read, For the Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself is doing. He will show him even greater things to do than this, and you'll be amazed. Just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, in the same way the Son gives life to those he wants to. Those verses tell us what John tells us all the way through his book, that Jesus has the power to give life, that Jesus is in control. And we see this very clearly in this reading in front of us today. Jesus has come to Galilee. He sat down on the hillside with his disciples, crowds who have heard about him and have seen his miracles are gathering round him. And in verse five, Jesus looked round and saw the large crowd that was coming to him. So he asked Philip, where can we buy enough food to feed all these people? Now, I've just said that Jesus is in control. But what that question uh, raises is, the, uh, is a thought in our minds. Well, it sounds like Jesus doesn't know what to do. Tesco's is a long way away and they would not have enough bread anyway. We're told that there were 5,000 people, 5,000 men, that is because uh, women and children want to be counted. So we could well be dealing with something like 15,000 people. In other words, the entire population of our parish and just a bit more. Just imagine if everyone from the area of Windy Arbor Road, Dragon Lane, Lickers Lane, uh, Whiston Village, Cross Lane, all the surrounding roads, everyone comes out of the houses and at the same time they all descend on a little corner shop perhaps the, the tesco at the top of the road or, or or the little hypermarket at the bottom of the road um how long would it take to run out of bread well not very long but jesus is in control in verse six jesus says this to test philip actually he's already knew what he would do as we look out on our parish some perhaps twelve thousand people uh, we probably feel daunted by the task of sharing the good news. It seems an impossible one. Yet as Jesus stands on that hillside, he gets his disciples to face the challenge, to look out at the vast crowd before him. He doesn't allow his disciples to hide. He doesn't tell his disciples to stand back whilst he sorts things out himself. Instead, he says, what shall we do? Where can we buy enough food? And Philip answers for the disciples and he answers for us when he replies, everyone to have a little we would need more than 200 silver coins uh, we would need about eight month wages we haven't got the resources jesus we can't do anything jesus there are twelve thousand hungry people there are twelve thousand people living in our parish there's nothing we can do and at this point andrew comes forward there's a boy here who has five loaves of barley bread and two fish but they'll certainly not be enough for all these people 
So there is not even the limited supply of perhaps a corner shop. There's just a packet of rolls and a couple of sardines. Yet Jesus meets the people's needs. Despite the size of the crowd, Jesus proceeds in an orderly fashion, seating people in preparation for the meal. In verse 11, we read that Jesus took bread, gave thanks to God and distributed it to the people who were sitting there. And he did the same with the fish. Now, just as an aside, we're reminded powerfully here of the importance of giving thanks to God for what we have. So often we look at what we don't have. We look out on the crowds. We feel that we haven't got enough. But we need to recognise that through Jesus, we have got enough. Jesus meets our needs. He, uh, we need to come to him. And Jesus meets other people's needs as well in terms of the gospel. What we have to offer people is not inadequate. It is the most precious gift available that it is possible for us to give. John goes on to tell us that the crowds had as much as they wanted. When they were full, he tells his disciples to gather up what's left, 12 baskets full of food. Now, maybe these baskets were one for each of the disciples. We don't know. The number 12 is a number which is often uh, symbolic. It represents God's people, 12 tribes of Israel, uh, 12 apostles in the New Testament. So there may be some symbolism here. The fact that food was left over shows that people had more than enough. And in fact, there was so much left over that the five loaves and two fish that Jesus started with was very small in comparison to what the Lord had supplied. He supplied all the people's needs. The miracle is the introduction to Jesus' great statement in verse 35, a verse which uh, indeed hangs uh, down from our ceiling on one of our banners, I am the bread of life. The verse continues, he who comes to me shall not hunger, he who believes in me will never be thirsty. In verse two of our reading, we learn that large crowds were following Jesus because they had seen his miracles. People were more concerned for their material needs, having full stomachs, being in good health. But Jesus meets our needs at a much deeper level. He is the bread of life itself. We are reminded of that this morning as we take communion, as we share in this bread. We remember Jesus' death on the cross for us. Take, eat in remembrance that Jesus died for you, that his body was broken for you. Of course, we're not literally eating Jesus' body. But as we call to mind that most important event in human history, we are remembering that Jesus meets people's needs and that we need to come to him. Our friends and families and our neighbours, they need to come to him. He is the only bread that satisfies. And after coming to him, we need to follow him. Now, according to verse four, this miracle occurs near the time of the Passover festival. Feast of the Passover is the time when the Jews remembered how God graciously rescued their ancestors from slavery in Egypt. Uh, the Passover was an extremely important festival. It was something that God had commanded the Jewish people to keep in order to remember what he'd done for them and their promise of allegiance to him in return. It was also important in terms of their own Jewish identity. At the time of Jesus, when the Romans were in control, the feast of the Passover was to the Jews what I guess the 4th of July is to Americans, or perhaps what the Battle of Boyne is to loyalist Protestants in Northern Ireland. It was a political event, a rallying point for intense nationalistic zeal. The Jews were looking for someone to lead them, someone to overthrow the Romans. Uh, and uh, some 5,000 men are gathered on this hillside, men who after this miracle would have been prepared, many of them probably to fight. In verses 14 and 15, we read that on seeing the miracle, people saw Jesus as the promised prophet of the Old Testament. They wanted to seize him and make him king. Why shouldn't Jesus uh, lead them? After all, he is the son of God. Surely it's appropriate for people to make him king and give him great honour. But that's not why Jesus had come. Jesus knew what the crowds wanted, but instead we're told he went off again to the hills by himself. Jesus rejects the popular road, the material road, the easy road, and instead he chooses the way of the cross. Now, the Passover is mentioned three times in John, the first in chapter two, where Jesus clears out the temple and declares himself to be the true temple. 
the true access point between God and man. Second reference to the Passover is this miracle where Jesus shows us that he is the bread of life. And then the third reference to the Passover is the Lord's Supper itself, the night before Jesus' death on the cross. Jesus does what it is right, not what's easy, and we must follow him. In rejecting the easy road, becoming an earthly king, Jesus opened the way to heaven. And if we're to be his followers, we must also do what is right. Following Jesus often involves us leaving the comfort or security or the easy option. It can sometimes feel like a lonely road, which is one of the reasons why we meet together to encourage one another on this journey. Making Jesus known, uh, living as a Christian, it can be hard. Yet as we walk this road, as we take the good news to the 12,000 or so of our parish, we're reminded that Jesus, the bread of life, is with us. We have all the resources that we need. So let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for that fantastic statement that you are the bread of life. That you are the one who sustains us, the one who gives us life itself. And Lord, as we look to you, we recognise that we have in you more than enough to go about doing the work that you've called us to do, to be your witnesses here in Weston or wherever we live. Help us shine for you in this dark place. Help us to bring others into your kingdom. Help us to grow your kingdom, your family. And help us to know that in you we have all we need. For we ask this in your name. Amen.
and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We just take a few moments now to bring before God anything that we particularly want to pray for today. We ask all of these things in the name and for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen.
May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, and the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.